So this is going over the chapter one test. Obviously, everybody has a slightly different version, um, but this will go over the basics um, for the questions. So you just have to kind of look at your test and see um, which one was yours. And the numbers are a little different, things like that. So for this question, which was basically a three, four, five triangle, if you look at it, it said A was three and B was four. So you could already know that R has to be five because of the three, four, five triangle. Um, so you could just tell me it's a three, four, five triangle. Been done with it. You could also just say, oh, we use Pythagorean theorem because they're square. They're so three squared plus four squared equals uh, five. So you could have done that. Or what some people did is they made their x y, and they had the vector. So they had a and they had b and they had r. And if you look at it, you can see that A has no X component, and it has a positive 3Y, and then the B is positive 4 and no Y, so this would be 4, and this would be 3, and then you end up with the same thing. For number 2, you had to show me you understood what we meant by negative C. So you can see here A plus B plus C. So if I want to make it negative, what I would do is I would keep the A and B the same. So there's positive A, there's positive B, but negative C would go the opposite way. So that would be negative C with the resultant being there. And so you can see that that one is this picture right there. All right. So then. If we look at this one, you had to be able to look at it and um, visualize. So I thought this one was a little awful on the computer, but it, it still makes sense. So you had to show you could add them head to tail. So if I look, there's vector 1, and then there's vector 2, and then vector 3. 3 is pointing that way, so I can see vector 5 is pointing that way, and so it ends up, the important thing is that it ends up where it started. So you needed to show me that you could draw the vectors and have them end up where they started. For number 4, or this particular number 4, you had to convert each of these into feet. So you see how there's three numbers. You had to convert each into feet. Show me you knew that volume, you just multiplied them, and then you had to convert them into cubic meters. Um, it gave you some conversion factors, right? So you had the one nautical mile here is 6,760 feet, and one fathom is six feet. So you had to show your work. Some of you, you, you've got to show your work so that I understand it. If I can't follow your work and it's just a bunch of multiplication, I have no idea what you did wrong. So, for example, if I start with my 2.65 number, oops, let's change that to a pen. So if I start with my 2.65 nautical miles, and that's an NM, I know, it doesn't quite look like it, but that really is an NM. And then I look for feet to nautical miles, and so I say, okay, so there are 6,076 feet in one nautical mile, so then I'll get an answer in feet. I would show that these cancel, and then I would just multiply 2.65 times 6,076. I would do the same thing for my 1.3, right? So I would repeat the whole thing, and I would have 1.3 nautical miles, and then I would multiply that again times 6,760 feet. Sorry, running out of space. Uh, 76 feet. I don't have space up there to write it, but that's what that says per one knot. But it's the same thing, right? And so I'd end up with something in feet. And then the last one, the difference would be that it was fathoms. So it was 21 fathoms. And so I know there are six feet in one fathom. So I end up with something else in feet, right? So you can see I've got one, two, three measurements in feet. So then I multiply my three feet measurements and I end up with something in, let's see if I can squeeze it in here, I'd end up with something in feet cubed and then I'd have to look up on the internet and I say, oh look, 
point zero two eight meters cubed is equal to one foot cubed, and so that I end up with my answers in meters cubed, which is what I wanted, right? But everybody's answer is different, so I'm not going to plug it in my calculator. All right, then we have number five. Now, number five, I think, is the hardest one. Um, and there are various ways you can do it, but I do appreciate those of you who did it as a table. So if I set up my table here, trying not to cover this, is, oh, that is going to be too hard to write it there. Let's try this again. So let's set up the table maybe here. So I have space. So we have the vector, and we had vector A, and we had vector B, and the resultant, and this would be the X, and this would be the Y. It doesn't hurt to sketch them in so you can see it. So vector A is 2190, and it points south of east. So I say, okay, south of east. So if I'm looking at my number line, I know this is north, I know this is south, I know this is east, and this is west. So I know vector A is pointing 37 degrees south of east. So here's vector A, right? And I want this, and I know this angle is I think the angle, is, nope, the angle is different for everybody. So that's my angle. I'm just going to call it theta because you're going to have to put in your own numbers. And then whatever A was, right, whatever your value was, in this case it was 2190. And so if I want my X component, this guy, I can see that's the cosine. So this would be positive, whatever your value for A was, cosine, theta, whatever your value for theta was. And then my y component I can see is negative, so it would be negative a sine. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I can fit that a little better. I tried to have enough space. So it would be that's theta. Negative a sine theta, right? Negative a sine theta. And then for my other vector, let's make it green, fb is pointing exactly south, right? So there's vector B. Now that's not added head to tail, it's just so I can see it. So I can see that for vector B there's no X and it's pointing down so it would be whatever negative B is. So then I would have to add them up and that would give me my totals for R. And then when I'm finding R, my R would be equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared, right? And then I look and I can see this is going to come out negative and this is going to come out positive. So um, I can see if I actually drew this in, I would have A plus B. A plus B is equal to R. So um, R, that's an R, right? And so I can see the X, Y components here. So I'm trying to find this angle. No, I am not trying to find that angle. I am trying to find the angle from the x-axis. So that would be a bad way to do it. Let's, let's draw that again. So if I was drawing in A and then plus B, my R would point like this. And you want the angle um, from east, right? So I got to find this angle right here, theta. So there's my x and there's my y. Right? So then I know that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of whatever your y over x was. Now, I did have some people who put positive and positive, and I kind of let it slide. Technically, it's negative and negative. It didn't matter in this case because you get the same answer. Um, and then you had to realize that that was the angle south of east. So that's important for finding the angle. Um, you have to realize you needed to do it from the east, and I think that was confusing. For number six... Um, you just basically had to draw a picture. Um, so you have the observer. So a lot of people drew the picture just like I would have done. So you had your observer, and he's looking at a tree. The tree is over here, right? Oh, he's looking at the top of the tree, right? And so he knows this angle is theta. He is some distance x from there. We also know his height, right? So we're tr so you find this component. So if we call that y, um, we know that y 
uh, is 27 meters away, and it's traveling line of sight, and make a tree top that is 22 degrees. Um, how tall is the tree? So we can see that y over x is equal to the tangent of theta. You solve for y, so y is equal to x tan theta. But then to find the height, you'd have the, the height of the actual tree, you have to add in the h. So then if you want the total height, you had to plus h to it to get your actual answer. So whatever the height of the person was. Most people did okay with that one. And then the question. Oh, this one, uh, most people did really well with, but you did have to show me how you got it. So again, this is using our dimensional analysis. So we look at v and we see that a is uh, meters per second squared. So you could do, I know you could do it as the dimensions, and then this one shows you like this. But anyways, meters per second squared times seconds. And so you say, okay, one second cancels. Great, that comes out meters per second. You check, yes, that works. And then for this one, uh, you would have A. So I look at A up here again. So I see it's meters per second squared times seconds. And I see that comes out to be meters per second. So yay, that works. But then I look at the second one. And I do it again, meters per second squared times seconds cubed, right? So that's this one, right? Because there's two parts. So the AT one was okay, but now I'm looking at the AT cubed, and I say, oh, that cancel, that leaves me with the seconds, that leaves me with a meter second, so that one um, doesn't work. So it was yes and no. Um, as far as retakes, so let me see if I can add this just so... Um, see it. Um, so here, here is what you can do. You can do corrections, right? You can do corrections. So that means you look at your test, you make a separate document, and you uh, decide, you know, you tell me this is what I did wrong, this is the right answer. This is what I should have done. So you have to actually write that out. This is why I had... Now, it's okay to say, oh, I guessed. I guessed. If you guess, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, but if you say I guess for all of them, then I'm, you shouldn't be doing test corrections. You should be doing a retake. Um, but now I understand it, and this is what I should have done. So that's what you kind of have to do. And you only have to do it for the ones you got wrong. You get half the points back. You get half the points back. And the max score you can get is 85%. So if you got more than 85%, please don't do this one. But do realize if you got 50% on the test, then the most you can get back is half your point, so plus 25%. So then your max is going to be only 75%. So that's the highest you can get. Now, the nice thing about doing test corrections is you can't go down. Your grade will only go up. Um, so that is a good thing. Right? Now, you can also do a retake. So I'm going to make a new retake. It's a little different than I've done. I was trying to figure out how this is going to work. Um, for this test, I want the retake done uh, by Friday. You'd have to, not by, you have to do it Friday during tutorial, September 4th. So they'll be, you come at the beginning of tutorial, you'll be given 45 minutes, just like before, a whole new test. You do it in WebAssign, you just redo it. Now, if you do the retake, and I grade it, that's the score you get. So let's go back to your scenario where let's say I got um, 50% and then I do my retake and I get 45%. Well, guess what? You have 45%. Now, you can do the corrections on the retake, but once you do the retake, that's your score and you start from there. Now, everything has to be done. So the retake is Friday, September 4th. Everything has to be done and ready um, if you want to do test corrections, retakes, all that. So the drop dead date is, and I'll put it on school loop, is going to be Monday. Nope, sorry, I lied. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. It's going to be Wednesday, September 9th. So anytime Wednesday, so it could be up to 11.59, Wednesday, September 9th, um, is when you have to have your corrections, or your retake done. So you do the retake on the 4th, you could still do corrections on it to get that grade up. Or you just do the corrections and you just turn that into um, Google Classroom where you had it before and you click the turn in button, turn in late work so that I know it prompts me to go look for it and then I will grade that. All right, hopefully this all helps.